Hi, my name is Tim Beacon from Medical Aid International. Our work supporting healthcare in the developing world often brings us into situations where there's no electricity in rural clinics. One of the problems that therefore the local healthcare providers have is that of how do they sterilise their equipment. Commonly all that happens is that on a good day the instruments are boiled which does not sterilise things. It feels good, looks good but bacteria still exist on the instruments. This device here, the Ecoclave, is designed to address that problem by using heat very very efficiently from a wood fire which you can see at the bottom um, and being able to maintain that heat in a fashion so that the pressure in the pressure cooker autoclave uh, is maintained so that sterilization does actually take place. The way that the Ecoclave works is you have a, a fire in the bottom that works on a draw through effect like any stove does, a wood burning stove. Um, the heat is taken up and it goes around the pressure cooker autoclave and obviously the heat comes out of the chimney here. The key points about the ecoclave is that this whole area here and indeed the area where the fire is is full of or is lined with fireproof insulated material. This means that the heat stays in um, and is therefore warms up the pressure cooker autoclave very effectively. One of the key things to remember as part of this process with the heat is that the pressure cooker autoclave, the standard type of pressure cooker autoclave we find in the developing world, it only has about an inch or just under of water in the bottom. Therefore, the heat going all the way around is used very, very efficiently, meaning the water is heated very, very quickly. Pressure cooker autoclaves operate through high pressure steam, killing all the bacteria and various microbes on the instrumentation. The way that this works is that the water boils inside the autoclave and sends out steam. You can see steam is now coming out of this valve. When we have continuous steam, that will mean that the inside of this is full of steam and there is no air. And at that point we will shut the valve um, and allow high pressure steam to build up. As you can see, this valve here, which we will be shutting in a moment, there is steam coming out of it now consistently. When you have steam coming out consistently, that means the inside of the autoclave, the inside of this drum, is now full of steam. Therefore, what we now have to do is close the valve in order for it to build up high pressure steam inside, which is what, the way that we kill the microbes. This can, this can be done by pushing it with any a piece of wood, a pen knife or anything. The main thing is not to touch it because clearly it's getting very hot. So we can see the steam now. We've closed the valve and what we will notice is that this pressure gauge here will now start to increase as the pressure inside goes up. What we want to do is we will get it to hold in the green area with the pressure gauge which is the point at which sterilization is now taking place. The key component uh, when sterilizing these items is clearly this item here, the pressure cooker autoclave. These are actually commonly available in the developing world, but the problem is that uh, they take a lot of heating and often um, people don't have the kerosene to put in their stoves, uh, so they therefore don't use them. Uh, the alternative is to get the level of heat and the level of heat control that we are doing now would take a very substantial fire, um, not dissimilar, not dissimilar to what you would use if you were cooking on a fire um, if you went camping, so it take, which takes, as we know, a lot of wood. But otherwise, these are a very standard 40 litre pressure cooker autoclave with a gauge, um, the, 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 the valve, the emergency valve, um, and then the, um, the bolts that hold it down um, tightly. There's no rubber seal to break, um, so there's no issue with that having to be replaced, so they are maintenance free. Um, and indeed, they are if used properly, a perfect solution to sterilizing uh, surgical instruments and other items where there is no electricity. The pressure gauge has gone up and is nearly in the green zone, which is where sterilization is starting to take place. Because the device, the Ecoclave, holds in the heat, I'm now going to shut the flap in order to reduce the amount of heat going through. This should lessen 
uh, the, the heat input into the autoclave and therefore mean that the temperature stays in the green zone. As you can see, the flap is now shut. The flap has holes in it, and in fact, what we will do now is we will shut the flap. And it has a bolt on it here, so we can easily adjust it and then hold it um, shut. So I'm now reduced the air input into the, uh, the fire, where the fire pit is, um, in order to reduce the heat to keep it in the green zone in the uh, for the sterilization we don't want it to go to the red zone because that means the pressure is getting too high the ecoclave is now sterilizing we have the heat which has now been reduced by reducing the air supply we have high pressure steam inside the autoclave itself the instruments inside are being sterilized we can see that the needle actually is in the top end of the the, the green zone which uh, is, is 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 fine um, it will drop slightly now because the heat has been reduced and the insulation will mean that it stays in that zone um, for the full 30 minutes that is required by the manufacturers to guarantee sterilization. The needle is in the middle of the green zone and we will keep it there for 30 minutes as per the manufacturer's uh, instructions. As any healthcare professional will tell you who works in the developing world, sterilization in areas where there is no electricity or unreliable electricity is a massive problem and on many occasions you're lucky if the instruments and other items just get put in boiling water. It doesn't take much imagination does it? Uh, forceps or surgical instruments that have been used in a pussy HIV infected wound being used on someone else not being sterilized properly in between. This device stops that happening. It is easy to use, it is safe to use and uses minimal fuel, being economical. The needle has been in the green zone now for 30 minutes, as per the manufacturer's instructions. The items inside will now be sterile. So, what we now have to do is to release the steam. This is straightforward uh, and easy to do. We've taken off, the, the heat is massively reduced, um, and has been for a while, through cutting off the air supply at the bottom. So all we do now, is we take a stick or any other item, we don't use our hands because all of this is very hot and steam is clearly um, extreme danger of burning. And all we do is pick up the valve and the steam will escape. At which point the pressure gauge will drop down to zero and when the pressure gauge is at zero, that's when we can open up the ecoclave or the, the sterilizing autoclave in the middle. So we can see here the high pressure steam escaping, one starts to notice the pressure gauge going down. Despite the high pressure of this steam leaving, the gauge does take a while to drop, indicating how much pressure is in the autoclave device itself. The steam pressure has decreased now as the pressure inside the chamber has, uh, has lessened. It's probably been about five or six minutes now um, that this steam has been coming out. This really does show how much steam is in the high pressure chamber um, and how long it takes to, to, to release that. I think one of the key things as well when you're running an ecoclave is that it does need to be washed. It's not something that you put the wood into and then you walk away. It needs to be looked at the whole time. Uh, as you gain experience with it, you learn how to uh, get the fire to the appropriate level you know when to shut the flap to reduce the heat um, because the heat keeps building uh, for a while after you have uh, um, uh, shut the flap so there is a technique and it must, it must be remembered as well you are dealing with high pressure steam this is dangerous and does need attention as we can see now the pressure gauge is at zero there is some residual steam coming out the water has been boiling after all inside but once the pressure gauge is at zero we can now release all of the, the bolts holding uh, the top of the autoclave down. We release them at opposite ends of each other in the same way that when we tighten it up at the beginning, we tighten this side, tighten that side at the same time, and tighten opposite each other at the same time, and we do the same when we are releasing.
Sterilisation is the heart of any healthcare institution, whether it's a hospital in the West or a hospital in the developing world. If you cannot sterilise, you have stopped the heart of the institution working and it will cease to function very, very quickly. So I've now released all of the, um, the, all of the, the bolts that, that hold the top down so I can now remove this like so and put it to one side. I then come here and pick up my pack of instrumentation. Um, this is wet steam obviously. Um, we can leave it here and it will actually just dry out under its own heat very quickly. But if I bring it out now, you will see there the indicator tape has changed colour, indicating that sterilisation has taken place. It's taken place with no electricity. It's taken place with hardly any fuel and it's taken place safely. That means in a developing world environment the next patient is not going to get infected by tissue or blood and bacteria from a previous case. This is a global game changer.